Hi, my name is Rich Gabriel and I'm a judge on the Colorado Court of Appeals. In the brief time that we have together today, I would like to provide some quick tips on more persuasive writing. I'll just jump right in. Keep it simple and keep it clear. Short, concise sentences are very, very powerful, much more powerful than longer, complex ones. Avoid Latin phrases and legal ease that tend to be not so persuasive. And in fact, if it's an obscure Latin phrase, you're requiring the judge to go look it up. The judge may or may not do that. Focus on your best issues. Don't bury a winning issue in 10 other issues that are where the other nine are not so persuasive. Focus on your best one. Pick your best horse and ride that. And don't repeat uh, what you've said before. Uh, many lawyers seem to think that judges won't get it unless an argument is repeated over and over. Judges do read briefs very carefully and they do get it. Good organization and roadmaps are key, I think, to good persuasive writing. Remember, you know the facts and, and the case and the evidence much better than the judge does when the judge first picks it up. If you start by talking about all kinds of detail without giving any organization or roadmap, it'll read to the judge like a bunch of facts that don't have, seem to have anything to do with one another. So help the court out by organizing your, your briefs well and by giving a roadmap as to where this is going. That makes the brief easier to read and it also helps persuade because the judge sees the line of reasoning. Be accurate in your briefs. There, there is nothing more deadly than citing a case for a proposition and the judge reads it and the case doesn't say what you said it says, or citing a place in the record and the record doesn't say what you said it says. Losing credibility with a court is absolutely deadly. That's what we as lawyers have and once that's lost it's impossible to get it back. In your facts section, in your briefs, stick to the pertinent facts. Judges frequently see briefs where the fact section is quite long and there's a bunch of facts put in there to disparage the other side, I suppose in the hopes that it may bias the court in favor of one's client. That generally is not, is not persuasive to the court. In fact, some judges I think would be insulted by that, that you're treating the judge as if the judge needs to be biased one way as opposed to being able to decide based on the law and the facts. Avoid personal attacks, even if you are personally attacked, and that's not always easy. Take the high road uh, in, in your briefs. There's no reason to scream at, at the other side to cite the word, say the word frivolous over and over and over. Don't label things as frivolous or misleading. It's far more persuasive to show the court. So for example, one could say my opponent is misleading uh, the court with respect to so-and-so's testimony. It's much more powerful to say, my opponent has said the witness testified X. The transcript, in fact, the transcript shows as follows, colon and quote it. That's much more powerful to show the court and the court can, can reach its own conclusions. Take out the adjectives and adverbs. They're not persuasive. They don't add anything. They end up just being screaming words. Get rid of meaningless words, words like clearly. If you have to tell the court that something, clearly something, then maybe it wasn't so clear. A sentence like, there's no uh, force to that argument whatsoever. Well, the word whatsoever doesn't mean anything in that sentence, so take out those meaningless words. Stay focused, stay concise. As I mentioned before, give courts context before you get into the detail. You know the facts, you've lived the facts as the lawyer, but the court hasn't, and if the court is just mired in a bunch of uh, facts and detail without knowing a context or having a frame of reference, your brief is far less persuasive. In terms of citation of authority, if you can cite one case that's binding precedent, that's much more powerful than citing a string cite with 20, with 20 cases that are binding precedent. The one case will suffice if it's a Colorado Supreme Court case and you're in a Colorado court. That's that's all you really need. The exception would be where a string site would be useful or foreign court's authority would be useful is if you're trying to argue a case of first impression and trying to persuade a court to adopt one line of cases as opposed to another, then it makes some sense. But other than that, if you've got a case binding authority that's on point, stick with that one and leave the rest out. Assist the court. 
Attach use, useful documents if that makes sense. If the case turns on a contract provision, let's go ahead and attach the contract or just the paragraph from the contract that's relevant. That's helpful, even if you're no, not required by the rules to attach it. But be very careful not to overdo it. Err on the side of less paper, not more paper. Don't tell the court what it must absolutely do. Courts don't like being told they have to do something. But that said, do tell the court what you're asking the court to do. Is it a reversal for a new trial? Is it a reversal and judgment should enter? Is it a remand? Whatever it may be, sometimes the remedy is not that obvious. So do make sure to tell the court what you're looking for. I hope these quick tips have been somewhat useful to you. I wish you all good luck. Thank you very much for listening.